there's a lot being talked about quality. Uh, however, we are trying to do something about it uh, in our uh, small way. Uh, so we'll be talking about uh, mainly what are the quality uh, considerations during design and uh, of course most importantly the safety and the protection of the power plant. Uh, quality leads to the performance of the plant uh, and monitoring of performance is also very vital uh, in order to optimize the performance. So here uh, is a simple equation uh, in any solar power plant. Everyone talks about generation and generation comes uh, as a result of two things. Uh, to put it simply, one is the insulation or the solar radiation that you receive and second, uh, the, uh, the most important uh, pa pa parameter in the uh, equation is the performance of the power plant, uh, which needs to be optimized in order to get the generation. Uh, so what are the governing factors uh, behind the generation? Uh, performance ratio, uh, the insulation or the radiation, and uh, uh, also the availability of the plant, uh, which is a uh, uh, function of the uh, uh, O&M, operation and maintenance of the plant. Uh, the performance ratio essentially uh, depends on the various system loss factors, which we'll be talking about briefly, and the degradation of the module. Uh, many of you might know uh, what is the CUF, capacity utilization factor, which is the ratio of the generation uh, and the potential energy, assuming that the plant runs 24 by 7. Uh, whereas the performance ratio is simply the ratio of the generation and the rated energy. Uh, both generation and rated energy uh, are proportional to the radiation and therefore the performance ratio is largely independent of the radiation. It's a true index of the uh, efficiency of the plant. So it's a typical system loss diagram where various losses come into play from DC side to AC side. Uh, typically, uh, the performance ratio is of the order of 75 to 80%. For a good plant, it is 80 or more. And uh, various factors, some of them as I've shown, uh, are design related, uh, such as the uh, module mismatch or the temperature. Then uh, if you look at the soiling, it's related to the operation of the plant and cabling, etc., is related to the installation. So it's not only about design, it's also about how you install the plant, how you operate, maintain the plant in order to maintain the uh, performance uh, ratio of the plant. So uh, quality, uh, why do we need quality? Because uh, uh, quality is essentially the key for long-term performance of the plant and uh, uh, that's the only way you can reduce your LCOE uh, or the levelized cost. Uh, also mo more importantly quality governs the safety aspects, the reliability and the durability of the plant and uh, the way to start is the standards compliance today BIS is coming out with various standards based on IC and uh, it's a good start to uh, uh, comply with those standards on uh, a system level, not only components but also system. Uh, so quality essentially uh, is not uh, uh, about simply maintaining the quality of components but it is the entire value chain starting from right from feasibility through to the operation and maintenance of the plant. So what are the various factors governing the quality, uh, feasibility and design inputs, component selection, uh, PV inverter design, uh, installation practices, monitoring, and the whole gamut. Uh, most important is quality checks during each and every phase and uh, feedback into the whole process in order to improve the uh, performance. Uh, various design aspects, I will not go into the detail, I think, uh, due to uh, want of time, because I want to show you some monitoring examples. Uh, but yeah, right from PV module to monitoring, there's number of design aspects where quality needs to be built into right from day one because in a PV plant you get only one chance to get things right. After you have installed the plant, uh, there's no comeback. Then electrical design, uh, if you look at, there's number of uh, uh, points which you have to go over and make sure that the quality is right. Uh, <clears throat> for example, cable sizing. 
the cable uh, size depends not only on the uh, sorry the cable selection not only depends on the current carrying capacity but also the uh, the length of the cable and therefore you have to optimize on that uh, so with all that uh, once you have a quality plan uh, it is essential to monitor the uh, it is essential to monitor the performance of the plant uh, three things are basic uh, generation radiation and the temperature uh, the module back surface temperature uh, you need to evaluate the performance not on a minute to minute or a day, uh, hour to hour basis but on a daily weekly and monthly as well as yearly basis and compare with your uh, initial estimates and make the necessary uh, uh, corrections to get the right performance so this is an example uh, this is the basic thing uh, thing that you should start with uh, where, uh, where you have the generation month to month the insulation that you get month to month and also the uh, with that you can calculate what is the performance ratio of your plant from month to month this will vary uh, depending on the radiation and the temperature uh, to evaluate the performance you need to look at dc performance prior uh, uh, ahead of the inverter the inverter performance and then the ac performance uh, on the other side the inverter performance uh, uh, we need to look at both DC as well as AC uh, energy generation, uh, the power as well as the energy efficiency of the inverter. And uh, in string inverters, uh, you need to look at the performance ratio of each and every uh, inverter because they may be working uh, 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 differently. Then you need to look at on the DC side, uh, input voltage, current as well as power, and then get into uh, each and every string current because there could be shading, soiling, uh, as well as the connectivity issues uh, related to the uh, strings. Uh, DC and AC performance, uh, there's four things I've listed here, which are the variable losses. Thermal loss, soiling, DC cable, and AC cable. Now, there is a way to actually uh, 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 input uh, the necessary parameters into the SCADA system and evaluate these losses individually. Uh, uh, on a on a daily or monthly basis so here is an example of shadow analysis wherein what we do is we have uh, the generation and uh, uh, the uh, loss due to shadow uh, has been estimated and therefore uh, the deem generation if there was no shadow and therefore uh, 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 something can be done about shadows either trimming trees or moving the panels from one place to the other and so on uh, then specific generation, which is kilowatt hour per kilowatt peak. If you have a baseline specific generation in mind, then uh, you can uh, get more uh, uh, meaningful uh, output from this. And then uh, you can look at the what is the expected radiation based on the, sorry the generation based on the radiation, and uh, also uh, start to look at some of the uh, effects uh, uh, such as uh, the soiling of the modules. This is uh, the inverter performance, uh, individual inverter performance, where you see what is the generation of each inverter and what is the performance ratio of each inverter. Then uh, you can even dig deeper. Uh, this is, we are looking at a daily uh, generation loss. And uh, you'll find that uh, I think during 9 and 10 AM, one of the inverters is actually uh, losing some uh, power energy, losing some output. And that could be due to shading or any other effect. So these are the things that uh, need to be monitored. Uh, the, uh, the point that I want to make here is there is lots of data available, but that needs to be analyzed in a meaningful way and corrections made uh, to the plant uh, so that the plant operates day in and day out with uh, good performance. Uh, so here are various performance optimization techniques. Uh, for example, uh, reduce mismatch of modules, then uh, uh, you have optimization of the cables, uh, interconnections, and so on. Uh, now, these are some of the system level standards. Uh, the first one is for the um, uh, safety uh, and design aspects. The second one is for the uh, uh, commissioning uh, and inspection. And the third one is for the, uh, mainly for the measurement uh, side of things. Then there is also standard uh, to do with the utility um, uh, interface of the uh, systems. Um, 
So here is one example how these standards can be used to uh, design the systems. 62548 uh, can be used to design this, all the safety aspects of the uh, system, uh, all the protection devices, cable sizing, earthing, uh, and so on. There are uh, some new standards in place for system earthing, as well as the lighting arrester, which need, need to be uh, uh, adhered to. And also surge protection devices, AC standard is already in place, and DC uh, will be coming in force. Uh, so uh, essentially, uh, we focus on the design and engineering of the plant, the, um, the component selection, testing and monitoring, and also the performance optimization. So these are the areas uh, we feel that they add value to the system, uh, uh, the, uh, deliver a quality system, and therefore uh, day in and day out performance and uh, good returns over the lifetime of the power plant. So essentially, you start off with quality and end up with uh, good returns uh, during the lifetime of the plant. Yeah, I'm already, almost done. So we have three uh, quality packs that we offer uh, for depending on the size and type of the system. And uh, they have various deliverables in compliance, uh, quality, uh, as well as the uh, uh, performance. And so uh, we can also do mix and match of these depending on the client requirement. Yeah, so that's uh, basically uh, uh, maximizing generation, optimizing performance uh, by quality design integration, monitoring and feedback. And therefore sustainability uh, of the plant can be achieved uh, through the quality value chain. Thank you.